Greetings, I am John the Verbose, and this is my video for the YouTube Pagan Challenge Week 46 on how do you speak to non-pagans about your spiritual path. That is something that I think for me as, not only as a Druid, but as a Reformed Druid, it's, uh, I think it's easier than if I was uh, anything else um, like uh, heathen, or especially Wiccan of of most sorts, and because you did you do get away with a lot of leniency because of how many Christian druids you have, and so and why when I, okay so I said Christian druids I think that's kind of what we're talking about for the most part um, I think we can all agree that if we're going to get asked about it it's very probable that they could that whoever we're asking is probably coming from a Christian background. I remember when that happened to me, I was wearing my Druid Sigil pendant in um, in a very rural place, and I was at a store, and the cashier asked me um, what my pendant meant. And and so I was like, well, that's the Druid Sigil of the Reformed Druids of North America. And so, of course, she kind of had this look of muted shock and confusion at the same time, not sure, probably mostly not sure what it was I just said. <laughs> and... Um, and so she did ask a follow-up question on, on that, and, and so I told her that uh, I, it, when it comes to that, I try to go into like the nutshell history of Reformed Druidry, uh, because it, it seems to help a lot of people I've seen that might be judgmental judge less. <laughs> well, at least if they're, I mean, I'm in Minnesota, and here we have Minnesota Nice, where we're going to be nice to you for the most part, and uh, and if there's something that we don't like about you, we'll still mostly treat you nice, and then we, we might talk about you behind your back later. But <laughs> um, but uh, we're for the most part we're not douchebags. Um, so, uh, so I was telling her that it was it's it's a universal approach to spirituality, and it was actually invented at Carleton College in Northfield, Minnesota, by a bunch of students that wanted to protest mandatory chapel attendance and because our founder actually went on to become an Episcopal priest. His philosophy was that if you're forcing somebody to go to, to church, then that could potentially detract from this, their, spiritual, their spiritual growth. And so he wanted to, well, he was protesting the mandate. He wasn't protesting the church or anything. And so he set up his, his own types of rituals that were outside in the campus and in the woods, and, and they decided to call it Druidry because they're basically consecrating whiskey out in the trees. And, and, and somebody was like, well, let's just be Druids because that's what my parents fill out on, on surveys that ask about religion. And so with a little bit of research, they're like, well, yes, but we don't agree with a lot of the uh, ancient practices, so that we're not sure if that works out. And somebody was like, well, what if we say that we're reformed and we've cast away all those things that were offensive? And they're like, okay. <laughs> and so that's how they became the reformed Druids, and it drew in people who voluntarily came to these events, these rituals in the woods. And uh, a lot of these, like, these rituals were made up. Some of them kind of resemble an Episcopal communion. And uh, and it, it did have this universal approach that whatever your existing spiritual beliefs are, come. We have this this skeleton of a liturgy that is very basic. And, and you basically, whenever there's some sort of deity or something invoked, then you interpret it in your own way. And, and so the deities, for one person, could be a non-deity to the other. Like, it attracted atheists and, and Jews and Christians and, uh, and all, sorts, all sorts of people. And, and it continues to do so today. And so it is that all-embracing approach that, that I think is both appealing and probably a boon for its survival. Because it is such, such an obscure type of Reformed Druidism, that, of course, Isaac Bonowitz did join and he tried to co-opt it and make it more pagan, and then that's when he created the offshoot of the New Reformed Druids of North America, the Schismatic Druids of North America, and then he finally got all frustrated with trying to control them, and, he was, and then he created ADF. <laughs> and he still used the Druid sigil. And, um, and, so, and that's great, and that created 
other groups, well, uh, there were other groups that schismed off of that, like we had the Henge of Keltria, and then there's this other local grove in the Twin Cities that, that, um, that schismed off of the Henge of Keltria, which is the Mists of Stone Forest Grove, I think it's called. And so, and, and it all can be traced back to the Reformed Druids of North America. So it's kind of like the common denominator, somewhere in the, the middle ground of all, of, of all American Druidism, I think. So... Yeah, I mean, this was a long-winded thing for me to say, and so that's why I try to put it into, like, a small enough nutshell as I can when people ask me about it. But, um, but yeah, it, it does make me nervous <laughs> because it's like, I don't know what your spiritual practice is or if you're supposed to discriminate against me once you find out who I am. Um, so, yeah, it, it can be scary, but, um, but uh, I've never had anything negative result from it. Uh, so, and for that, I... I attribute the Minnesota nice factor. So that's all I had. Thank you for watching my video, and we will see you next week.